legendary leader of the Jewish community laid to rest. Family, friends, and loved ones gathered to say goodbye to Elie Wiesel in New York City. His death is our top story at 11 o'clock. The funeral service was kept private. He spent many of the last 60 years in New York. That's where his foundation is based and where he was a professor. Local 10 News reporter Glenna Milberg is live in New York with the story tonight. Glenna. And in fact, a force in so many ways, not only here, but there and around the world. Tonight, we've moved to Battery Park because this is the Museum of Jewish Heritage. It is a Holocaust Learning Center. Elie Wiesel was actually the honorary chair here. And tonight, so many here are thinking the world has lost another survivor of that generation. But Elie Wiesel's legacy of peace and tolerance, that will go on. Those who were there called the funeral a celebration of life, what Elie Wiesel lived. Countless would have been there if only they could have. Although he sort of symbolized death because he represented so many of the dead, he was a celebration of life. He protested death at every level. Wiesel's wife, Marion, a Holocaust survivor too, runs the New York City-based foundation that continues to lobby and educate for tolerance and peace and passionate engagement where none exists. A symbol for his people and... And all people, really. And all people who in, encounter um, crushing, um, unbearable circumstances to persevere. I belong to a traumatized generation haunted by the world's indifference. Wiesel was 15 years old when the Nazis deported his family to Auschwitz, where his mother and sister were gassed, and then Buchenwald, where he would watch his father die, and where he would visit decades later as a guest of President Obama. What can I tell him? That the world has learned? I am not so sure. Wiesel's brutally unvarnished account, Night, is one of more than his 50 books, a Nobel Prize for Peace among countless humanitarian awards for fighting atrocities and injustice everywhere, a moral compass, a gentle but demanding voice to remember and learn. The question is, will the world ever learn? Those questions, Elie Wiesel's words, those are just as relevant today as they have ever been. He was buried in a private ceremony right after this morning's funeral, but we are hearing that there are public memorials that are planned to honor Elie Wiesel coming up in the next few days. I'm Glenna Milberg, live in New York City tonight, Local 10 News.